It's a little chilly this morning, guys. Uh, the geese were just flying over, as you saw, and uh, they're kind of confused, or they're acting like they're confused. They're kind of going to the northeast, which is uh, kind of odd. But anyway, such a beautiful sight to see. Maybe there's a lot we can learn from watching uh, what the wildlife is doing this time of year. So, this week, let's talk about what's coming our way. They are saying that uh, we will have a frost on Wednesday morning. Kind of dreading that. As you saw, I had my pumpkins out there and some watermelon. Those pumpkins have gotten wind beaten this week, but I still think they're okay. The watermelons, we're going to have to try to uh, improvise and uh, probably bring them back into the high tunnel uh, for the next couple of days, starting on Tuesday. My... Uh, cabbage or my lettuce and my carrots are going to be just fine but in that front raised bed um, that we have some tomatoes and peppers and I think what we're going to do is my husband has some of those totes that we hadn't bu built um, wicking tubs out of yet and we will place those over our tomatoes and our peppers so we're preparing for a cool week and then it's going to warm up rapidly again that's very typical here in Texas a um, little concerned that um, our frost keep getting pushed out a little later in the year. Last year I had to replant, the year before that I had to replant. So we're thankful that we have this high tunnel to protect everything we have going up. So I'm gonna show you, you know, a couple weeks ago I planted my bush beans and I planted four different varieties and we're gonna talk about what came up first and what is looking really well. So these are my Kalima beans. These were the first to come up guys and they tied with my Conteri beans. Both of those started coming up uh, quicker than the other two. The other two are the Landreth Stringless. And you can see these are looking pretty good, but again, we're gonna have to keep these babies warm. We'll have to use Mr. Heater probably Tuesday night. And then the Roma beans were the last to come up. But you can see on down the line, they're looking really good. I'm interested to see how each of the harvest uh, starts to come, which one is going to uh, produce us some green beans sooner. And then these are my Conteries. Some of them I planted um, over a month ago. And then the new ones you can see are coming up quite well. So we're gonna watch these and we're gonna see which one is the biggest producer, which one starts to produce first, and we'll continue to update you through the season so you'll know maybe for next year or even this year. Um, here in Texas, it looks like we've got still some time to put some things in the ground because of uh, our light, cool weather. Now we have been getting up to 80 degrees on certain days, like last Sunday, it was 84 degrees. We went from 44 in the morning to 84 degrees in the afternoon. We're not expecting that today. Uh, they say we're going to be probably around 67 or 68 with a lot north wind. My husband started uh, some pinto beans, as you all know, in a wicking tub, and he built a trellis, and they are doing quite nice, and they love this trellis that he built. We're excited to see how these do. Uh, we've not ever grown pinto beans before, and we wanted to see because, again, we're changing up our gardening habits um, to make sure that we have food that we enjoy, um, and a good variety. Let's take a look at my cucumbers. These are my pickling cucumbers, and then I have my French petite cantaloupes, and then I have my salad cucumbers. They all seem to be liking it out here. Um, they do get wind beaten a little bit if we raise up the sides on the high tunnel, so we have to be real careful with that, but we do need uh, to do some climate control because it does get quite a bit warmer in here than uh, the outside ambient temp. So uh, using our vents and our roll-up sides really help to keep things cool. And one thing that's beneficial to this cool weather that we're having is our cold weather plants. Our broccoli seems to be doing fantastic. We have another kale in there. Here are my lettuces. I'm gonna make us a good old salad to last us all week. And uh, here are my eggplants. And you can see I have some uh, salad coming up in between there. I'm gonna look into that and make sure it doesn't interfere. Um, those were seeds I had put out that took a long time to come up, but we'll watch and see. And then my Napa cabbage that I'm gonna have to get in here and prune some of those dead leaves off and uh, try to get them shaped up a little bit. And then I have another broccoli over here. Here's an update on my hanging pots that my husband started from seed. These are all petunias and you can see they're doing quite well. We're excited about these um, as well. And we think that 
around Mother's Day, they are going to be primo. And you can see I have some over here and we think they're gonna be, it's gonna be perfect timing because they all are starting to flower out. Very excited about this. This is a new thing that we're doing, guys. Here's a broccoli plant that um, I've already harvested from and we did let it bolt out and seed out and you can see I have tons of pods. So I'm gonna be getting ready um, to harvest all these broccoli seeds. We're getting very serious about our seed saving uh, this year, guys. We want to make sure that we have seeds readily available to us to grow what we need to grow and to be as self-sustainable as we can. So on down the line here, these are some of my mortgage lifter tomatoes. And uh, we are doing them in the wicking tub and you can see they're beautiful. They are just really thriving in these wicking tubs. So uh, again, I think this would be another method that uh, we continue to use in our high tunnel. And here is another one. And uh, sheesh, guys, these are about three and a half to four feet tall already. Can't get over this Swiss shard, guys. Look at this. And I'm very excited because it is getting ready to bolt out. So I'll be able to save seeds from this butte that has survived all winter long in here. I have two beautiful cabbages in a wicking tub and they seem to be thriving and doing quite well. In fact, these look much better than anything I've ever put in the ground. And look, there's a little ladybug. She's our friend and we've been finding them in the yard all over the place and bringing them in here and releasing them. And our ginger has started to come up so I'm happy about that. We are big ginger eaters. Um, we're gonna try to do the same thing with turmeric. We've not been as successful, but uh, we do have this in some wicking tubs as well. Our tomato bushes have continued to thrive in here. They are still just exploding with tomatoes. This is the earliest we've been able to harvest tomatoes ever. So uh, I'm looking forward to all of these starting to ripen up and they are. Uh, we've already got some. I showed you at the beginning of the video, and we are enjoying these already. So uh, this high tunnel has been such a blessing. And let's look at all these seed starters. You can see that we've uh, put quite a big dent in, uh, in our seed starters. I have been uh, selling them online. I've been selling them at work. So uh, we are very happy with the success that we've had on selling our plant starters. And uh, we have some peppers here, but I'll tell you, Another reason why I'm glad we still have some of these is that if we lose some of our tomato plants um, this week when the, when the weather threatens to get a little cool, I've got some backup plants. And um, so I will continue to do that every year to make sure that we have backup plants that we can put outside in the event we get hit with a late frost or freeze. That is such a pretty sight to see when you see these uh, tomatoes come into fruition. And look at this one, guys. This is a black cream, and it has just really taken off. And um, our tomato plants have continued to grow all the way to the top, and we expect now that they're probably close to 12 feet tall. 12 feet tall. Never had tomatoes 12 feet tall. This plant is just producing like crazy. You can see I have clusters and clusters of tomatoes. Here's another one where we have black cream. They are doing fantastic. We have very nice sized tomatoes and we do enjoy fried green tomatoes. So I do come out here guys and get quite a few and fry them up for our Sunday dinner. But uh, each of these tomato plants are just exploding with tomatoes. When these get ripened, it's gonna be a very beautiful sight. So much color is going to be here. Our potatoes, they're looking quite well. They have white flowers and they're just absolutely gorgeous. We're gonna continue letting these go until uh, we know that these start to die off and the potatoes are ready. But you can see on down the line of our wicking pot row, everything is just really thriving and doing wonderful. So lots of work to do today, especially be watching and uh, finding out how to make sure that um, our outdoor plants are protected and you need to as well. Um, for your flowers and stuff, if you've already put them outside, make sure that they um, are, are damp or wet. Uh, Tuesday night, I've just always heard and we've always done that um, if the plants, a wet 
uh, frost is better than a dry frost, so that's what we're gonna do. We'll water everything down really well to make sure that it's protected. You don't want a dry freeze or a dry frost. So you can see all around here that everything is thriving. And uh, we'll be praying for y'all this week. I know a lot of you have already things uh, put in the ground. Try to get you some cover, try to get you a, a frost cover or a freeze blanket, put over it um, some plastic. If you do decide to use the plastic, you wanna make sure that you um, take it off as soon as the temperatures are above freezing the very next morning or they'll burn up. So get prepared. Um, again, this is a late, a late frost, a late freeze. I need to go back last year and look and see uh, what um, our latest frost and freeze was last year and the year before, but to me it seems like it's being pushed out later and later. Be sure and leave a comment, guys, and tell me um, where you're at and what you're doing. I know I've got lots of people up north that follow me and you hadn't even had a chance to start planting, but uh, those of you that are in the south who have already got things in the ground, let me know what you're going to be doing Tuesday night here in North Texas. Thank you for watching. We have more videos coming up. Hit that subscribe button and hit that like button. We love to stay in contact with you. I got a great little community. We appreciate each and every one of you for taking the time to follow us and watch us. So uh, we'll be in touch and we'll let you know how we fare this week.